something I would wear in Myanmar for an important occasion, like a TED Talk. Myanmar is a very traditional country in Southeast Asia. It's just below China, between India and Thailand. And it's not an island, in case some of you are wondering. There are many unexpected stories. As a teenager, I came here from Myanmar three years ago for the first time alone. Let me share with you the most striking one. Back in Myanmar, we don't rely on the internet because it's unreliable. It was very slow. When I was taking the MET requirement test to come to Illinois Tech, I wasn't able to load the question pages once the test started. So I tried refreshing the computer, restarting the connection, and by the time the questions finally loaded, the test had already ended. The media was also restricted and controlled by the government at that time. So when we want to know something in Myanmar, we ask people. Let's say we're going to a place that we've never been before, and there's no working GPS in Myanmar. So we would go as far as we know from our knowledge of the streets, and when we get to a place that we no longer know, we would ask the locals, and the locals will give us direction and guide us to the destination. That's why when I came to the US, if I didn't understand something or know something, I would intuitively ask my friends. Guess what some of the replies were? Why don't you Google it? <laughs> now, and I thought, that's what friends are for? Do they not want to help me? The story here is that we both had expectations on how we would react based off of our past without acknowledging the fact that we both had very different pasts. Every country, every individual, it's very different, even if they come from a similar community. And Myanmar is totally different from the United States in many ways. Both in the U.S. and in Myanmar, there is woman inequality. But in the U.S., women are aware of it, and they're striving for equality. Whereas in Myanmar, many women are not aware. And those few people who are actually aware are not given the chance to voice. I attended a great private high school in Myanmar where I learned my English, and there are more male students than female students. It's the same with studying abroad. More men are sent to study abroad than women. Because many parents in Myanmar believe that if they send their daughters to study abroad in college, when she comes back, she's going to get married, go to the man's family, and just take care of her babies at home. And there's a tradition in Myanmar that the newlywed couples would move to the man's family until they are able to move out themselves. Because that's what my society was like, doesn't mean I, as a woman, is going to be exactly like that. I dream to be a successful architect, be an inspiring leader, run my own business. Because my society suppressed women, doesn't mean I'm weak. So we shouldn't generalize people's abilities, define people's characteristics based off of our preconceived notions of the community they come from. Otherwise, we will create misunderstandings on a personal level. Just a few days after I came here from Myanmar, many people thought I was born in the US because of my English. I don't really have a foreign accent. And when actually, it's just my high school in Myanmar has many teachers who have studied abroad or are Americans and Europeans. Sometimes people I've met for the first time even said, oh yeah, I saw you just a while ago. You're that American-born Chinese, right? <laughs> Sometimes strangers just approach me, looked at me, and start speaking to me in Chinese. It's not a problem. I also speak Chinese as my third language. Many people are making assumptions based on the appearance. I look like an Asian, so I must be Chinese. Or from the first impression, 
my English doesn't seem to have a foreign accent, so I must be born in the U.S. I also received a lot of comments, you're not like the other Asians. Now, I thought to myself, what does the other Asians mean? Yes, true, geographically, I'm from Asia, so I'm Asian. And what the other Asians mean to some people are people who are only staying in their group of social circle from the same culture. And just because I wasn't staying with my group of Myanmar friends or because of my English, it was interpreted that I was not like the other Asians. Even if we're all from Asia or the Middle East or the West, every single one of us has our own unique way of thinking. So we will be very wrong if we compare this person that we just met making assumptions and conclusions from the people that we have met in the past just because they come from a similar community. So how can we prevent this misunderstanding, this generalization of people? There's a way. Awareness. If you're aware, not only you know or understand, but you take action. Let me introduce a method from Myanmar. Warmly welcome and take care of foreigners. Since the internationals are coming here, leaving everything behind, they'll have a lot of challenges, language barriers, cultural shock. They'll be anxious, and it's probably harder for them to approach you. And you can see it in Illinois Tech, where Chinese students stay with their own group of Chinese friends, Indian students stay with their own group of Indian friends, and we can change it. We, as the internationals, anywhere, can step out of our comfort zone and meet new people. Forget about the experiences like my Google story or those unexpected reactions. You can change it. You, the locals, wherever you're in the world, can be welcoming, understanding to the internationals at your homeland. Keeping awareness in mind, we can all change it together. Respect each other's differences, different paths of life. And if we do that, you will see the world through a completely new lens.